Welcome Stalker! In this video I detail how to use all of the gameplay elements in Stalker Anomaly. If you're new to Anomaly, I recommend watching all the way through. Then, start a new game, and return to this video when you have questions. Everything is timestamped in the description for reference. If you've already played Anomaly, stick around, you might learn something new. This video assumes that you are playing with no mods and are using the default settings and keybinds. Sorry guys, I had to draw the line somewhere. Lastly, if you like this content, please show me some love by hitting the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. This tutorial was a lot of work to put together and I appreciate your support. If you think this tutorial missed something, drop it in the comments. I'm also doing an anomaly let's play on the channel. Take a look if you want to see how these systems work in action. Enough waffle. Get out of here, stalker. It's time to learn. For this tutorial, I have left the default faction as loners. The starting location is set to Rookie Village in the Cordon. Gameplay difficulty is set to Easy. Progression difficulty is set to Tourist. Story mode is checked, and Accessible Zone is checked. I selected the loner faction for this video. The loner faction is recommended for people who have never played Stalker. Even experienced stalkers who are diving into Anomaly for the first time should consider beginning as a loner. A lot has changed since the original Stalker games. At the beginning of a new game, you start with preset gear which is determined by your starting faction. You can also spend a starting pool of points to add to your starting gear. This is a one-time transaction at the start of each game. You won't get these points again, so spend up. On the Tourist Progression difficulty, which is what we're using, you have 1,000 points to spend. Get a sort of shotgun, a battery pack, two bandages, two first aid kits, a can of baked beans, a strong energy drink and a pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes. Loners begin in the cordon region of the zone, which is the least dangerous region and a good place to learn the ropes. Don't be fooled into thinking that the cordon is safe though. All regions are dangerous, especially to the unprepared. Some game modes and factions let you choose your starting location, but this isn't recommended for new players. Gameplay difficulty affects player-related things such as how much damage you take, how fast stamina drains, your carry weight, and your rate of dehydration, hunger, and exhaustion. Gameplay difficulty can be changed in-game from the settings menu under Gameplay, Gameplay difficulty. Progression difficulty affects the in-game economy. A high progression difficulty makes things more expensive to buy and you are paid less for items you sell. Progression difficulty also changes how many purchase points you get when starting a new game. A high progression difficulty incentivizes you to craft and repair items to save money. Progression difficulty can be changed in-game from the settings menu under Gameplay, Progression Difficulty. The following is a list of items that you should always carry. Don't stress about why or how some of them work, we'll go through them soon. Enough bullets to fill a minimum of two magazines for your guns. Bandages. Food. Water. Radiation purging items. First aid kits. Battery packs. Now that we're loose in the world, Let's examine the information on screen. The blue bar is your health. When your health drops below a quarter, your character wheezes. When health is nearly empty, your vision brightens and fades to warn you that you're in trouble. When all health is gone, the zone claims another life. Health regenerates very slowly over time, but you shouldn't rely on natural regeneration. If you're hurt, heal yourself. 
The green stamina bar isn't visible when it's full, but appears as it starts depleting. Sprinting, jumping, and carrying a heavy load depletes stamina. Masks also affect stamina drain and regeneration. Watch stamina carefully. If it goes low, you will become breathless and unable to move for a moment. Stamina recovers over time while you remain still. Walking recovers stamina if you're not encumbered. Some items, like food, recover large chunks of stamina or enhance stamina recovery, like caffeine tablets. Stamina is important. Running out of breath when you need to move quickly is often deadly. The orange bar is your psychic willpower, or psi. Some enemies and events deplete your psi. If your psi fully depletes, you die. Other icons appear on the HUD based on events, your location, or your current condition. Hazard icons indicate that you are close to a harmful area. A grey icon means the hazardous effect is minor. A yellow icon means the hazard is significant. Red icons indicate severe hazards which only the prepared and well-equipped will survive. Good armour and equipment are required to survive hazardous situations. The icon image indicates the type of hazard. Hazard icons correspond to an icon in the player stats area indicating the type of hazard. The ammo icon appears in the bottom right corner when a gun is readied. The icon indicates the type of ammunition loaded and above it are how many rounds are loaded in the magazine. The number to the left indicates the firing mode the weapon is in. Some guns are capable of automatic or burst fire and this value will change to A for automatic or a number greater than 1 for burst fire. Condition icons appear to the right of your health. They indicate that you're affected by a condition. Circle icons are negative effects, and square icons are positive effects. The colour of the icon indicates the severity of the effect. Grey is mild, yellow is moderate, red is severe. Let's go through the effects. This icon indicates thirst. Drink water to remove this condition. This icon indicates hunger. Eat food to remove this condition. If you stay awake for long periods, expect to see this icon. Sleep to remove this condition. This icon appears when you receive or are purging radiation. Use vodka, cigarettes or radiation meds to purge radiation. The strength icon appears when your carry weight is boosted by medication or other effects. The stamina icon appears when your stamina regeneration is temporarily affected. The heart icon appears when health is being restored. First aid kits and other medication restore health. The biohazard icon appears when you have increased protection from chemical damage. The radiation protection icon appears when your resistance to external radiation is boosted. The brain icon appears when you have increased protection from psi damage. The bleeding reduction icon appears when you are under the effect of bleeding reduction such as applying a bandage. This PDA icon appears when your PDA receives a new entry. The portrait of companions in your party appears to the right side of the screen. Icons for the items in your armor slots appear in the bottom right of the screen. Use the W, A, S and D keys to move forward, backward, strafe left and strafe right. Use the mouse to look. Press the space key to jump. Jumping depletes a small chunk of stamina. Hold X to sprint. Sprinting depletes stamina over time. A higher carry weight depletes stamina quicker. Press control to crouch. You move slower when crouched, but are a smaller target and make less noise. Hold shift while crouched to low crouch. A low crouch makes you an even smaller target and is the slowest but quietest movement. You can also squeeze into spaces normally inaccessible. A contextual prompt appears when something is usable. 
Press F to use things in the world. Containers, items, people, doors and other things can be used. Press Q or E keys to lean left or right respectively. Leaning lets you survey the surroundings or return fire while remaining behind cover. Free look is unbound by default, but is worth your time to bind it. Hold the free look key to look around without moving your weapon. This is handy when you're moving forward and want to look around without stopping. Walk into a ladder to begin climbing it. Use the forward or back keys to climb up or down. You can look around a little while on a ladder, but if you move your view too far from the ladder, you'll let it go. The jump key also releases you from a ladder. To descend a ladder, walk off the edge above it. Don't worry, you'll automatically turn and hold onto the ladder. Be careful when releasing a ladder early. Dropping from height will hurt you, though armor with good impact protection negates some of the damage. The inventory is where weapons, armor, and items are equipped and managed. Don't be daunted by all the information. Let's bring you up to speed. Press I to open the inventory. Time is not paused while you're in the inventory, as you can see on the left. So make sure you're safe first. The inventory window is comprised of six areas. Equipment slots, the quick bar, armor slots, player stats, player details, and the main inventory. Items which are worn or equipped appear here. Each slot holds a specific item or type of item. Binoculars, headgear, helmet, armor, weapons, backpack, thrown items, device one, typically your PDA, and device 2. Items in the quick bar are used in-game by pressing the corresponding function key, F1 through F4. Armor slots hold armored plates, mutant skin, artifact containers, and other items. There are a potential maximum of five armor slots. How many are available depends on the armor worn and certain armor upgrades. A radiation symbol indicates that the slot is not available. Upgrades to your armor may open more armor slots. Player stats show your health, damage protection, and degree of stamina regeneration. Player details show your name, faction, portrait, and amount of rubles you currently have. The main inventory is where all the unequipped items you are carrying are stored. If you pick up an item but can't see it in your inventory, check your equipment slots. Items automatically equip if the corresponding equipment slot is empty. The main inventory will become cluttered as you pick up more stuff. You can filter items by type using the filter buttons. All. Weapons and attachments. Armor, helmets and backpacks. Ammo and grenades. Artifacts and mutant parts. Devices, tools and repair items. Medicine and consumables. And miscellaneous. Pressing 1 through 8 will also toggle all of these filters. Double click an item to equip it. Dragging items to the appropriate equipment slot also equips them. Let's equip all of your starting items. Before you equip the backpack, note the carry weight. This number changes when you equip the backpack. Your carry weight is displayed below the inventory. The left number is the weight you are currently carrying, 
the right number is your maximum carry weight. When carry weight is white, you are unencumbered. You can carry up to 50% of your maximum carry weight without a stamina penalty. When current weight is orange, you are encumbered. It costs more stamina to move and a yellow encumbrance symbol appears in the HUD. If you exceed your maximum carry weight, the number turns red and you are severely encumbered. You can still move while severely encumbered if the carry weight slightly exceeds the maximum carry weight, but stamina drains more quickly and takes longer to recover. If you exceed maximum capacity by too much, you won't be able to move until you lighten the load. Being encumbered is dangerous. It's harder to escape nasty situations. You'll find ways to increase the maximum carry weight as you progress, such as bigger backpacks, but weight is always a consideration when venturing into the zone. Don't get too greedy. All items have detailed descriptions about how they function. Hover over an item to reveal a quick panel. Right click and select details to show more information. Most items have a description and a list of effects. If the item is a weapon or armor, it has additional information for repair and upgrades. Items which can be disassembled have a components list. For weapons and armor, the components section is replaced with replacement parts. I'll talk about components shortly. Let's take a look at your starting gear. The leather jacket has almost no protection. It sounds cool, but there are no points for style in the zone. The PM pistol is as dangerous as harsh language. It's a weak firearm, but still deadly in the hands of a competent stalker. Ammo is cheap and plentiful, and has a few variants with more oomph. The 6H4 bayonet knife is essential for breaking open containers and harvesting mutant parts. A stronger knife is needed for thick-skinned mutants. Bolts are used to find safe ways around anomalies. You'll want more of these. The respirator is a basic face mask that offers minimal protection against radiation. Still, better than nothing. You'll need the backpack in order to carry more stuff. The flashlight is used to illuminate dark places. Switching it on reveals your position to anyone watching. Bread is the basic food of the zone. Cheap and found everywhere. The PDA is your map task list, and encyclopedia of the zone. Purified water keeps you hydrated, cheap and found everywhere. The matchbox lets you start campfires or smoke cigarettes. 9 by 18 mm full metal jacket ammo for your pistol. Standard ammo for the 9 by 18 caliber. The wallet stores your rubles. The radiation symbol is a symbol for the loner faction. And this patch can be attached to armor to show that you belong to the loner faction. If you're following this tutorial, you also have the TOS 66 sword off, two barrels that go boom, an effective weapon for any stalker, particularly against mutants. The first aid kit restores health over time. Baked beans replace more calories than bread. Cigarettes are a good way to purge low-level radiation. Cigarettes weigh nothing, unlike vodka. The strong energy drink boosts stamina regeneration and carry weight for a few minutes. 12 by 70 buckshot shells, basic shot for all shotguns. Battery packs power devices like your PDA. Bandages reduce bleeding. You'll collect a lot of stuff. Knowing what items are and how to use them will go a long way to helping your survival. Let's take a look. Right click an item and select details to show detailed information about the item. Items with a common function have similar properties, like food for example, which reduces hunger. Information such as weight and flavor text are universal to all items. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial to describe every type of item, but we discuss the function of many items throughout this tutorial. 
always pay attention to an item's properties, especially with consumables. This information tells you exactly what the item does. Right click an item and select use. Food, drink and medication are consumed, but some items are used on other items, like the sharpening stone set, which can be used on your knife and multi-tool. Ammo is used by selecting it from the ammo selection wheel, which is described soon. Equipped items, like the torch, are used by pressing the associated key, which is L, for the torch. Some items aren't used directly and are consumed by other items during maintenance and repair. Drop items by dragging them from your inventory into the world. You can also right click the item and select drop. Some items have multiple uses, such as purified water and the first aid kit. The number of remaining uses is displayed as pips underneath the item. The purified water has three uses. This information is also in the item details. If you have more than one of the same item, they automatically stack. Stacked items have a multiplier in the top left corner, indicating how many items are in the stack. Left click the item to list all items in the stack. You can interact with items in the stack via the stack window. Multi-use items that you loot may be partially used. When these items are stacked, they do not automatically combine. To combine items, drag them onto each other in the item stack window. As long as the combined uses don't exceed the maximum uses for the item, three in the case of purified water, they form a single item. Combine multi-use items to reduce inventory weight and give you a better idea of the resources you have. Some multi-use items can be separated. Right click the item and select separate. Separating items automatically creates a stack or adds to an existing stack. Some items can be disassembled for their components. The item details components section shows a list of possible components that you can salvage from an item. I say possible because there's a chance you may not recover some components. There's also a small chance that disassembling an item yields no components. Components are used in crafting and repair, which is explained later. Special tools are required to disassemble items. A Swiss knife or grooming kit can handle smaller items and armor. The multi-tool can disassemble all items which can be disassembled. Items which can be disassembled have a disassemble option when right-clicked. As discussed earlier, you can drag items from your inventory into the quick slots to assign them to the F1 through F4 keys. Some devices need power to work, such as the torch and PDA. They slowly drain batteries while used. You can replace batteries at any time by dragging a battery from the inventory onto the device. If the old battery still has charge, it is added to your inventory. Otherwise, it is discarded. To unload a battery from a device, right click it and select unpack batteries. Your first multi-tool purchase could be your last, if you take care of it. The multi-tool can disassemble all items capable of being disassembled. As its condition degrades, each use will degrade it quicker. Multi-tools can be repaired with the three-piece sharpening stone set. Make sure you keep yours in good condition. The PDA is your mission control. Everything you need to know or track is registered in your PDA. When the PDA registers a new entry, a sound plays and an icon appears above the sidebar. Entries are added when you encounter new things like creatures, factions, artifacts and anomalies. The PDA also updates when a task is received, updated or completed. Press P to ready the PDA. This mode is useful for navigating while referring to your map. 
but it's not easy to read and you can't interact with it. Press R to make the PDA full screen. You can navigate the PDA's features in this mode. Press R to lower the display again, or P to put the PDA away. The in-game time and battery life are in the top right hand corner. While your PDA is open, it depletes battery power. Hover over the PDA in the inventory to see exactly how much power is left. The screen dims when power is low. When all power is used, the screen goes black. Drag a battery onto the PDA to change battery packs. Battery packs that you loot from enemies or the environment are unlikely to have a full charge. Always check how much power is left for the batteries you find. The area map is how you navigate and reach other regions. You'll use it often, so let's take a look. Scroll the mouse wheel up or down to zoom in and out of the map. Hold left click and drag the map to shift your view of the map. You can also use the arrow keys to move the map. Click the center button to center the view back on your character. Click the legend button to display the map legend. The zone is broken up into regions. Each region is a self-contained open map for you to explore. Regions are referred to by name among stalkers. Expect to hear names such as Dark Valley, The Garbage, and Agriprom. The game begins with markers already placed, and you will discover more as you explore. The PDA can be replaced with better versions which show more icons on the map. Let's look at the map in detail. This is your lovely self. Story markers appear when you're playing with story mode enabled. Gold crosshairs show locations or people you must visit to advance the plot. Normal tasks you agree to complete appear as white crosshairs, and these indicate people, places, or mutants. Important characters are represented by this icon. They are faction leaders or other people with influence in the zone. Traders buy and sell a variety of goods. They are great places to sell items you don't want. Not all traders accept all goods. Medics sell healing items, drugs and other medical related items. They can also heal you and purge radiation, for a fee. Technicians are the repairmen of the zone. They sell items related to weapon and armor repair and maintenance. They can also repair or upgrade your items, for a fee. Beds are places that you can sleep to remove exhaustion. Bartenders offer food and drink and usually have paying tasks that need to be done. Guides are stalkers who will safely transport you through the zone. Use them to fast travel to locations, for a fee. Companions are displayed as icons like yours, but smaller and green. Better PDAs let you see other stalkers on the map. The colours represent different factions. Hover over a stalker to see more information about them. Travel markers show locations where you can travel to neighbouring regions. Hover over a travel marker to see which region it links to. Stash markers show the location of stashes. Hidden caches of items awaiting your discovery. Hover over the stash marker for more information about the stash. Area markers show points of interest which range from faction bases and anomaly clusters to prominent landmarks. Hover over an area marker to see its name. Click the Tasks button to show all your current tasks. Tasks are explained later. The marker filters above the map turn marker types on or off. The Statistics tab tracks your actions and accomplishments in the zone. This area shows statistics about your gameplay. This bar shows how many achievements, regions and PDA articles you have unlocked or discovered. This column shows the top 100 stalkers currently in the zone, ordered by their rank. Your entry is below it, and it looks pretty abysmal at the moment. Rank indicates how well known and accomplished someone is. 
Your rank increases naturally as you play. Rank can change how people regard and interact with you. A high rank means you're well known and revered among stalkers, but it also makes your enemies envious and they may send people to hunt you down. Reputation is like morality and is affected by in-game actions. If you help your faction, provide first aid to wounded stalkers, kill your enemies, and generally act like an upstanding member of the zone, your reputation becomes positive. If you stab everyone in the back, kill people in your faction and act like a deviant, your reputation suffers. Reputation also has an impact on how people interact with you. Not everyone you meet will think a positive reputation is a good thing. This column shows achievements you have unlocked. Hover over an achievement to learn more about it. The Relations tab shows how factions view each other. Pay attention to the column of the Free Stalkers faction. This is the faction you start in, and you'll notice you have some rival factions at the bottom of the list. These factions will attack you. Take note of the Goodwill Row. This is your personal standing among all factions. It is possible to develop goodwill with enemy factions through the use of disguises. Click the Display Values button to see the exact amount of goodwill. The sheet changes to a numerical list. Red numbers are generally negative, yellow numbers are favourable, and green numbers are maximum goodwill. This area shows information about companions in your party, if you have any. The Contacts tab lists nearby stalkers who are neutral or friendly. Hostile stalkers don't appear in this list. With the Known option checked, only stalkers you have spoken to are shown. You may need to uncheck and recheck the refresh button in order for this list to update. The Guide tab is your encyclopedia. It covers a lot of useful information. Notes shows all written notes, crafting manuals and other errata you find. The Equipment State option shows the condition of your currently equipped items. Achievements shows all achievements that can be unlocked. Unlocked achievements grant special bonuses and it's worth reviewing them. Anomalies shows all the anomalies that you discover. Entries have useful information about their hazards and potentially how to overcome them. Artifacts shows all the types of artifact you find. Artifact information is useful in determining the effects of equipping the artifact, its weight, and its tier. Characters shows the notable characters you have met. Factions lists all factions that you have seen, friendly or otherwise. Features shows information about the gameplay elements of Anomaly. Items shows information about important game items like detectors and artifact containers. Locations shows the regions you have visited. Mutants shows the mutants you have encountered. If you're struggling against a type of mutant, read up on them here. Options shows game modes and options that you can activate to enhance your experience. The radio tab lets you tune into one of two local stations in the zone for some pleasant travel music. Custom music can be played in the music player below the radio station selection if custom music has loaded. Custom music is beyond the scope of this tutorial. The Messages tab shows all communication that the PDA has logged. This includes conversations, things you have read, and news and reports. Sort the message history by using the filter buttons and date filter in case you missed an important conversation or call out. Let's show you how to use that iron. Wouldn't want you to shoot off something important, unless it belongs to someone else. Press the numbered keys to ready weapons and equipped items. You have a knife, pistol, and shotgun, so press one on the keyboard. Yep, that's a knife all right. Press two on the keyboard. Oh hey, it's your shooter. Press three. That is your boomstick. Stalkers don't like weapons pointed at them, especially if you're not in good standing with them. Press B to lower your weapon. A lowered weapon makes nearby stalkers less anxious. This is recommended practice in stalker encampments and when meeting neutral stalkers in the zone. 
Some weapons, such as the knife, can't be lowered. Press B to raise your weapon again. Aim down sight, or ADS, uses the sight of a weapon to aim. Hold right click with a weapon readied, or lowered, to aim. The pistol has no scope or reflex sight, so you're aiming down the iron sight. All guns have a built-in iron sight. If a scope or sight is attached, you'll aim through those by default. Left click to attack. For automatic fire weapons, hold left click to continue firing, assuming the weapon is not in single fire mode. Stalker Anomaly has bullet physics. Bullets follow a parabolic curve when fired. The longer they're in flight, the more they drop. This isn't noticeable at short ranges, but is a factor when sniping or shooting at distant targets. Mastering bullet drop comes down to experience. Some weapons have different firing modes, such as automatic and single shot. Press 9 or 0 to cycle backward or forward between firing modes. The current firing mode is reflected next to the ammo counter in the bottom right corner. Press R to reload your readied weapon. Guns can be reloaded if the clip isn't full. It doesn't have to be empty to reload. There are no magazines in Stalker Anomaly. Clips are automatically reloaded from the ammo in your inventory. Press the corresponding number key to holster your weapon. Your pistol is readied, so press 2 to holster it. Some Stalkers don't like lowered weapons either, and will react more favourably if you holster your gun. Holstering weapons is a situational choice. If you're in an exposed or dangerous area, it makes sense to have a weapon in hand. If you're attacked, the short time it takes to ready a weapon can mean the difference between life and death. Right-click a gun and select Unload to remove its ammo. Press U to unload all guns in your inventory, excluding equipped guns. Gun statistics define how guns work. Accuracy determines how close bullets hit to where you're aiming. Handling determines the speed of readying, reloading, and ADS. Bulkier guns have lower handling. Handling also determines how often a weapon jams. A gun with high handling is more reliable, even in poorer condition. Damage is the raw stopping power of the gun. Ammo type changes damage against armoured and unarmoured enemies, but this is not reflected in the damage statistic. It's also worth noting that damage is per bullet, so something like the shotgun is calculated per bullet. It may seem like it has a lower damage output than a pistol, but in practice, it's a powerhouse, thanks to the multiple pellets within each shot. Fire rate determines how quickly bullets fire. A high fire rate means you'll chew through ammo quickly on automatic fire mode. Mag size indicates how many rounds the gun fires before needing to reload. Gun upgrades modify other hidden statistics. Flatness determines how far bullets travel before they're affected by bullet drop. Recoil determines how severe the recoil is when the gun is fired. Reliability reduces the rate of wear that the gun incurs when fired. Hover over a weapon to highlight all compatible cleaning kits, components, and ammo. With a weapon equipped in Weapon Slot 3, hover over another weapon in your inventory, Weapon Slot 2, a container, or a trader to compare statistics with Weapon Slot 3. A green bar and number means that the statistic is better, while a red one means it is worse. The lighter colour represents the exact statistics of Weapon Slot 3. Stalker Anomaly has a number of weapon types. Melee includes knives and axes. As you might expect, they don't require ammo. But you do need to be close to the enemy. Always a dangerous choice. Melee weapons deteriorate with use and must be sharpened with a three-piece sharpening stone set. Knives are typically assigned to Weapon Slot 1, the 1 key on the keyboard. Larger items, such as axes, must be assigned to weapon slots 2 or 3. Press 4 to ready a grenade. Grenades explode 4 seconds after you pull the pin. Once you throw a grenade, the next available grenade in your inventory automatically equips to the grenade slot. 
pretty friggin' handy. There's also a grenade quick throw button, which tosses a grenade even if you don't have one in your hand. Mines take the form of IEDs or anti-personnel mines. Unlike grenades, mines are used from the inventory window. Right click a mine and select a proximity trigger or a timed trigger. Selecting a trigger primes the mine where you are standing. Mines in Anomaly are potent. Make sure you're far enough away and behind cover when they explode. Some mines have limited options. Firearms encompasses all shooting weapons including pistols, shotguns, SMGs, assault rifles, sniper rifles and explosive launchers. Firearms are the popular choice for resolving conflict with the locals. Ammunition is rated on two abilities, armor piercing and tissue damage. Most bullet calibers have standard ammo and at least one variant which is better at armor penetration, flesh damage, or both. Press Y to access the ammo wheel, then select the ammo you want to load. You may need to press R after selecting an ammo type to reload the gun. Bullet penetration for armor is measured using a standard system. Link is in the description. In Stalker, leather jackets and clothing style armor are measured as rating 1. Light armor is rated 2, medium armor is rated 3, heavy and exosuit armor is rated 4, and Nosgoroth armor sits at the top at 5. An A after a rating indicates inferior penetration, so a 3A rating is worse than a 3 rating. Some weapons can be fitted with attachments such as silencers, scopes and grenade launchers. Hover over a gun in your inventory to highlight all compatible attachments. Drag an attachment onto a gun to install it. Right click a gun and select the appropriate detach option to remove attachments. Press 7 to attach or detach a silencer without needing to go into your inventory. Some guns have built in silencers or scopes, these can never be detached. Grenade launcher attachments need to be selected to be fired. Press V to switch to the grenade launcher if your weapon has one attached. Press V again to return to regular fire mode. Open the gun details and scroll to the attachments section to view attachments that the gun uses. Weapons degrade with use, if they are damaged in combat or if they are damaged by anomalies. The coloured bar under the weapon indicates its condition. You can also see its condition in the weapon details. Guns in average condition may jam when fired, and jamming is more frequent as guns degrade further. Repair your weapons to keep them working properly. Guns on other stalkers are usually too poor to repair. Guns in poor condition must be fixed to improve their condition. We'll discuss repairing and fixing guns in another section. When you pull the trigger and the gun goes click instead of bang, that's a jam. Press R to unblock jams. Old ammo has a washed out icon and is prefixed with old in the name. Old ammo can be fired but will degrade the gun condition faster and may be less powerful. Old ammo can be crafted into new ammo which removes the negative effects. You need a multi-tool to disassemble weapons. Weapons can be disassembled to reclaim their base components. We discuss components shortly. Open the weapon details and scroll to the replacement parts section to see what components a weapon can return. Each component has a colored number underneath, indicating its condition. To disassemble a weapon, right click it, hold the ALT key and select disassemble. Holding ALT is a failsafe feature which can be disabled from the settings menu. The components you receive from disassembly are random. You may not receive all the components and there's a chance that you won't receive anything. So, why disassemble weapons? Traders won't buy weapons in poor condition, but technicians buy weapon components regardless of their condition. Weapons in poor condition can be improved by switching poor components for better quality components. Armor is the thin layer of fabric between you and the zone. Take good care of it, and it'll take good care of you. 
There are five types of armor class in Stalker Anomaly. Clothing, light, medium, heavy, and exosuit. Heavier armor offers better overall protection, but some armor is better suited to particular activities. Armor is the most expensive item on the shopping list, so choose carefully. It might be a while before you can afford another set. Some armor has a built-in helmet or mask and you can't equip other helmets, or in some cases a backpack, while the armor is equipped. Armor protects against a range of damage. Not all armor protects against all types of damage. If armor is missing a category, it provides no protection from it. Pockets of radiation are everywhere in the zone. If your armor has poor rad protection, you'll be popping anti-rad pills and swigging vodka to purge radiation. Some anomalies are chemical hazards. You'll want high protection in this category if you want to survive them. The zone is filled with electrical anomalies. You'll want high electrical protection to survive accidentally walking into one. Which you'll do, sooner or later. Rupture is protection from mutant attacks. This one should be high on the requirement list, particularly if you're playing on harder difficulties. Psi fields and mutants such as the controller deplete your psi. A high psi protection reduces this damage. Fire anomalies are everywhere. High thermal protection ensures you won't incinerate immediately if you put a foot wrong. Standard protection from bullets. You'll be shot at at some point. The more bulletproof protection, the better. The explosive category protects against grenades, mines and other explosives. The impact category protects against falling damage and physical impacts like thrown objects. Better suits have armor slots. Armored plates, artifact containers and other items can be equipped to armor slots to provide additional protection. Hover over armor to compare it with your equipped armor. A green bar for a category means that the armor in your inventory offers better protection. A red bar means it performs worse. The lighter colors represent your equipped armor's protection levels. Like weapons, armor can be disassembled for components. Armor includes body armor and helmets or masks. A Swiss knife, grooming kit or multi-tool is needed to disassemble armor. Right click the armor, hold the ALT key and select disassemble. The number and type of components you receive is random, and there's a small chance you receive nothing. Armor components can be sold to technicians. They can also be repaired and used to fix armor. This is the most cost-effective way of getting better armor on medium and high progression difficulties, particularly with medium armor and higher. Helmets and masks are an important part of your protection from the zone. Masks boost radiation and psi protection, and helmets provide good bullet protection. A good mask provides the bulk of your radiation protection early on. Some helmets have a faceplate, which becomes blurry when it rains. Press T to wipe water off the mask. People throughout the zone may trade with you. You may find bargains in the most unlikely places. Let's talk trading. Traders sell a range of goods including weapons, armor, basic medications and food. They are less picky about what they buy than other types of trader. Medics sell healing items and medication and won't buy much else. Medics also heal and purge your radiation for a fee. Bartenders sell food, drink and booze. They buy food and drink, as well as mutant meat and parts, and some medications. Technicians sell items relating to item repair. They buy similar items and components. There are traders who only deal in specific types of goods, such as Butcher in the garbage region who deals in mutant parts and meat. They usually buy these goods at a much higher price, so it's worth seeking them out. Talk to a trader and select the trade option. The trading window appears, showing traded goods on the left and your inventory on the right. Your available cash appears in the top right. Double click or drag items to add them to the trade area. The total cost of the selected items appears next to the buy and sell buttons. When you're happy with the trade, click buy or sell. 
The cost of bought items is deducted from your cash. Hold control while double clicking to transfer an entire stack of items instead of transferring them one at a time. You can trade with neutral and friendly stalkers. Not everyone wants to trade with you, but many will. They won't have extensive stock or good prices like regular traders, but the items they carry might surprise you. Trade prices can vary across the zone and change with your rank, reputation and faction standing. If your purchase isn't urgent, it can be worth shopping around for a better price. Some people have little cash on them and are limited in how much they buy. This is usually the case for stalkers in the wild. Traders have an unlimited supply of cash, as denoted by three dots. Some influential people can offer to halt enemy hostility for a period of time if you bribe them. This can be useful for travelling through enemy territory. The zone has a rhythm, a dance that all stalkers must learn to survive. I'll show you the steps. Thirsty stalkers don't perform well. When this icon appears, you're thirsty. A grey icon is mild, but yellow and red impact your abilities and it will result in death if left unchecked. Use purified water or other hydrating liquids to remove this condition. Items which reduce dehydration have the drink and thirst reduction properties. This icon appears when you're hungry. As with dehydration, a grey icon means mild hunger, but yellow and red have side effects and can result in death if left unchecked. Use food to reduce hunger. Food items are identified by the food property. Pockets of invisible radiation are everywhere, and it's easy to stumble into one. Anomaly clusters also emit radiation, and attacks from mutants can irradiate you. This status appears when you're irradiated, and you'll hear a Geiger counter click. Radiation purges from your body naturally over time, but you'll lose health periodically while you're irradiated. The more severe the condition, the quicker you lose health. To remove the radiation condition, use vodka or cigarettes. Medications with stronger anti-radiation properties exist, but these are expensive and usually reserved for heavily irradiated areas. We're not playing with automatic radiation detection turned off. If we were, a Geiger counter would be needed to detect radiation. Scrapes with the locals are inevitable. If you're hit, you may begin bleeding. There are no condition icons for bleeding. Instead, a red pulsing appears around the edge of the screen. The deeper the red and quicker the pulse, the worse the bleeding effect. Blood loss drains your health. Mild bleeding may stop on its own after a while, but most bleeds should be fixed as soon as possible. Getting hit when you're already bleeding increases blood loss, and mild blood loss can quickly turn into a nasty bleed. To fix bleeding, use a bandage. Other medication and items reduce bleeding too, but these are costly and best reserved for serious bleeds. To heal lost health, use a first aid kit. First aid kits apply healing over time and they don't fix bleeds, so make sure you're stabilised and safe before healing. Other medication and items heal health too, but some, such as Yadalin, have side effects. Look for the healing property to identify items which restore health. Hard hits, particularly from mutants, can cause you to drop your weapon. It'll be on the ground nearby, but you'll often be too stunned or panicked to pick it up. This is why it's always a good idea to carry a backup weapon. Running, jumping, and high carry weight deplete stamina. Stamina replenishes over time, but regeneration is affected by your carry weight. Items like the strong energy drink boost stamina regeneration. Look for the stamina recovery condition to identify items which boost stamina regeneration. This appears if you haven't slept in a while. To remove this status, find a bed and use it. The map shows the location of beds. How long you need to rest depends on how exhausted you are, but the default duration is usually accurate. If you have a sleeping bag, you can create a bed. Beds can be created almost anywhere, but sleeping in open, unprotected areas may attract the wildlife. If you're going to sleep in a sleeping bag, find a suitable spot first. Right-click the sleeping bag and select Use to create a bed. 
You can then use the bed. Stand near a sleeping bag, right click a compression bag in your inventory, and select use to pack the sleeping bag away. The crosshairs tell you whether someone is hostile. Point at a stalker to display their name and faction. The crosshairs also change color. A yellow crosshair means the stalker is neutral, green means friendly, and red means hostile. All mutants are hostile. The crosshair doesn't warn you of radiation or other dangerous areas. The zone is active day and night. Stalkers are generally active during the day and return to shelter as dusk falls. More dangerous mutants appear at night and it's harder to see where you're going, or what's sneaking up on you. Find safety before nightfall until you find your feet. A torch can help you navigate in the dark, but you're visible to enemies. With the torch equipped, press L to turn it on. Night vision headsets offer more functionality, but have a built-in torch. To use night vision, equip a night vision headset and press N. Better versions of the night vision headset improve the image. Binoculars are useful for surveying the expansive regions of the zone. They help you spot threats before you stumble into them. Binoculars can be upgraded to improve their magnification and function. With binoculars equipped, press 5 to ready the binoculars. Scroll up or down to adjust the magnification, if you have those upgrades. Tasks are your primary source of income, particularly early on. Talk to people and traders and see if they have tasks for you. Tasks may require you to go to other regions. Be careful about doing this early on. The further you stray from the cordon, the more dangerous it gets. Completing tasks also earns you faction goodwill, and stash locations are often given as part of the task reward. Secondary tasks often have a time limit. Be careful about accepting tasks you might not be able to complete. If you are unable to complete a task, you can tell the task giver or let the time expire, but your goodwill with that faction will drop. We begin the game with story mode enabled. To begin the main story task, talk to Sidorovich and select option 2, then option 3, what's this commotion about Strelok, then option 1 to accept the main task. Another primary task can be activated by selecting the option which mentions getting rich. This task isn't related to the main storyline and will feed you activities to do. Fnatic in Rookie Village offers to teach new players the ropes by walking them through some of the common actions in Anomaly. Accept and complete his tasks as they give you hands-on experience. The first task, boar hunting, can be tough. Save before you head out. As well as tasks, you'll earn money by selling items you find, looting dead stalkers, harvesting mutant parts, and recovering and selling artifacts. You'll learn more about mutants and artifacts soon. Emissions are dangerous events which affect all regions in the zone. Warnings about emissions appear in your PDA periodically. Pay attention to them so you can plan ahead and make sure you're near cover. Just before an emission hits, a siren sounds, if you're near a stalker camp, and your PDA loses signal. A new task warns you to find shelter. You have a short time to find cover before the emission strikes and kills everyone caught outside. The interior of buildings, tunnels, and underground areas are good places to shelter. The Find Shelter task places a task marker on the map in your PDA, which reveals the nearest safe location to shelter. Once you're in shelter, remain there until the storm passes and the find shelter task completes. Going outside prematurely kills you. There is medication which lets you survive an emission while out of cover, but it's safer to bunker down and ride out the storm. Emissions also have a chance to create artifacts in anomaly clusters. Psi storms are similar to emissions. They affect the entire zone and force everyone to run for shelter. Being caught in a psi storm is just as deadly as being caught in an emission. Like emissions, you should find shelter and wait out the storm. Medication is available which lets you survive psi storms while out of cover. 
but it's safest and easiest to find shelter. As with emissions, a task marker on the map indicates the nearest safe location. Psi storms have a small chance to create artifacts in anomaly clusters. Pulses are small localized events which form in the sky above an area and shoot a blue beam to the ground. Anything underneath or close to a pulse takes psi damage, which can be fatal. If you hear a pulse forming in your area, move away from it. Pulses only last a few seconds, but can strike at any time with little warning. The zone is a large area split into regions. Regions are more dangerous the further north they are. You can travel between regions by going to an area of the map that contains a travel marker. These indicate paths to other regions. Walk through these areas to trigger a travel prompt to a neighbouring region. Mutants infest the zone, and most are dangerous, even to experienced stalkers. Mutants often make a noise before attacking. Keep your eyes and ears open when travelling. Dead mutants can be harvested for mutant parts and meat. Some traders pay well for mutant parts, and meat can be cooked or sold. Your starting knife can harvest small mutants, but harvesting larger mutants requires a better knife. Enemies may surrender during a firefight, dropping to their knees with their hands behind their head. Talk to surrendered enemies to threaten them into giving you more equipment. There's a chance the threat may fail, and the enemy will knock the gun from your hand and continue fighting. But, if the threat succeeds, you'll walk away with more loot. Anomalies and artifacts are the bread and butter of Stalker. Anomalies can be hard to spot in daylight, and almost impossible to spot in the dark. All anomalies are dangerous, and will kill mutants or stalkers, even with good protection. Some anomalies are easy to see, like this fruit punch anomaly, which emits a green light and makes a hissing noise. Others, like this vortex, are almost invisible, with only a slight ripple in the air and a faint hum to signal their presence. Use bolts to safely detect anomalies. Press 6 to ready a bolt. When you find a suspect area, toss a bolt at it. If something happens, congratulations, you found an anomaly. If the bolt falls to the ground and nothing happens, you're probably okay. You can retrieve thrown bolts. You'll learn to recognize anomalies by sight the longer you're in the zone, but bolts never lie. Anomaly clusters appear on the map the first time you walk near them, and these locations are where you'll find artifacts. Artifacts are strange and wonderful items of great value. Traders pay well for them, and some artifacts bestow special properties when worn in armor slots. Artifact hunting is dangerous, as it often requires the navigation of an anomaly cluster, but the payoff is worth it. Most artifacts require special equipment in order to find them. The echo detector is the basic device for detecting artifacts. You'll need better artifact detectors to find higher tier artifacts. Better detectors have interfaces which make it easier to locate artifacts but you won't have access to those to begin with. Fnatic, in the loner camp, offers a light tutorial, and he gives you an echo detector after you complete the mutant hunting task. Echo detectors can also be bought from traders. Equip a detector and press O to ready it. Press 6 to equip bolts in your right hand. You'll want these when navigating an anomaly cluster. You can hold any small item in your right hand while the detector is equipped, including bolts, the knife, or a pistol. The echo detector lights up when you're near an artifact. The beep grows quicker as you approach the artifact. Artifacts are invisible and won't appear unless you have a detector readied and are close. When you're close enough, the artifact appears and you can take it. Anomaly clusters can be scattered with radiation so be sure you have a way to purge radiation before entering these areas. Detectors are powered devices, so make sure to carry spare battery packs. More powerful artifacts are radioactive and will irradiate you when you pick them up. To safely carry artifacts, you need a lead-lined metal container, or LLMC. These containers completely negate the effects of the artifact, both positive and negative, but shield you from radiation. To put an artifact in a container, Pick it up and drag it onto an LLMC. Artifacts have to be out of their container to be traded. 
Right click the container and select open. Opening a container means you'll start becoming irradiated, so trade or store the artifact quickly. To safely equip an artifact and gain its beneficial properties, you need an artifact container. You can check an artifact's properties by opening the PDA, click guides, click artifacts, and select the artifact entry you want to read. Note the radiation property. Artifacts with greater radiation output require better artifact containers to safely contain. The properties of an artifact container show how much radiation they block. Drag the artifact onto an artifact container to put it inside. If your equipped armor has armor slots, you can equip artifact containers into these slots to gain the benefit of the artifact inside. You may find PDAs on dead stalkers. PDAs can be viewed and they may contain an entry which reveals a stash location on the map. Viewing a PDA will unequip your own PDA, so don't forget to re-equip your PDA afterward. Some PDAs are encrypted and can't be viewed. Technicians can unlock them for a small fee. You can give PDAs to some traders, even after you've viewed them. Traders will offer cash and stash locations in exchange. PDAs can also be broken down for spare parts. Stashes are locations where you are guaranteed to find items. They are marked on the map with green or purple icons. Green stashes contain regular run-of-the-mill items, while purple stashes contain higher tier items and usually crafting tools. Because stashes guarantee loot, it's always a good idea to find them. Backpacks in your inventory can be used to create a stash. Right-click a backpack and select Create Stash to place the backpack where you're standing. You can add or remove items as you would other containers. No one will touch yours. It remains there for the entire game or until you take everything in the stash. You'll pick up a lot of items as you play. Some are lying around in the world and can be picked up directly. An icon appears when you're looking at an item which can be picked up. Press F to grab it. Many items are in stashes, containers, or on dead bodies. We'll call all these things containers for the sake of clarity. Press F while looking at a container to open it. Items in the container are on the left. Your inventory is on the right. Double-click a container item to transfer it to your inventory. Hold Shift and press T to take everything in the container. To transfer items from your inventory to a container, double-click them. You can also drag and drop items between the container and your inventory. As with trading, hold control and double click to transfer an entire stack of items. Destructible crates and cases may also contain loot. They can be broken with gunfire, explosions, or even jumping on them, but using a melee weapon is easiest. Crates and cases can also be picked up and carried. Hold X and press F while looking at a crate or case to grab it. Press F again to put it down. Dropping a case breaks it. Loose items are left by other stalkers all through the zone. You'll find them on benches, near campfires, on tables and shelves, and anywhere that stalkers might gather or pass through. It can be worth revisiting locations you have already visited, as item spawn points refresh after a period of time. Guides in the zone can take you to various locations. They demand payment for their service, but they can save you time and resources. In-game time passes when you fast travel, so take care of any negative conditions beforehand or they might be worse when you arrive. There are areas with dangerous psi emanations. You get a danger notification when you enter these areas. Make sure you have a good psi protection before going into psi affected areas. Other stalkers go about their business in the zone. You can talk to them, provided they're not hostile. They may have tasks for you to do and may even agree to trade with you. Some tasks require you to trace a signal. An RF receiver is required to do these tasks. RF receivers can be bought from traders or crafted at a vice. RF receivers are powered devices and require battery packs to work. Equip the RF receiver and press O to ready it. Left click to increase the signal frequency by one, right click to decrease it by one. Hold shift, then click to increase or decrease by increments of 10 and hold ALT, then click, to increase or decrease by increments of 50. 
Tune the RF receiver to the frequency mentioned in the task, then travel to the region that the task mentions. The RF receiver beeps when you're within a certain radius of the target, and the static and beeping gets clearer the closer you get. RF receivers usually lead to stashes, and having a receiver isn't necessary to find or loot the stash. Some PDAs found on dead stalkers may mention a frequency in an area. Clicking these entries won't make a stash marker appear, and they won't update your PDA, but you can follow these signals and loot the stash. Weapons and armour require ongoing repair to remain effective. If they fall below a certain condition, they become less reliable. If they fall too low, you won't be able to maintain them and they must be fixed. Fixing gear is always expensive, though often less expensive than purchasing new gear. Once you have good equipment, maintain it, or it'll cost you. Let's see how it all works. Guns and armour can be repaired with a number of cleaning and repair kits. We'll refer to this range of items as repair kits for the sake of clarity. Repair kits have a condition threshold. If the item is in worse condition, you need a stronger kit. As an example, the gun oil and cleaning solvent works on weapons with a condition 90% or above. Stronger repair kits cost more money, which is why it pays to regularly repair your guns and armour. Once guns and armour have degraded too far, they can't be repaired. Repair kits can be looted or bought from technicians. Hover over a gun or armour to highlight all compatible repair kits. The items compatible repair kits section shows all the repair kits which can be used on the item. Find the highest repair kit which works for the item's condition. Right click a repair kit and select use to open the repair window. This is the repair window. Compatible guns or armour are to the right. Click one and it appears in the bottom right. The old number shows the current condition. The total number shows the condition after the repair. Many repair kits can use supportive materials which boost how much condition is repaired. Supportive materials are shown in the usable materials section of a repair kit. If you carry supportive materials, they appear in the supportive materials area of the cleaning window. Click a supportive material to add the bonus to the repair. Only one supportive material can be used per repair. Click repair to improve the item condition. Supportive materials used are removed from your inventory and the repair kit spends one use. Technicians can also repair your weapons and armor without the need for repair kits and supportive material, though they charge a high price. Click the repair upgrade option in their dialog and click the weapon or armour you want to repair. Click the repair button and confirm the purchase. Your weapon or armour is restored to full condition. Knives and other sharp melee weapons are repaired differently. You need a three-piece sharpening stone set to repair melee weapons. Right click the three-piece sharpening stone set and select use. Click the item you want to sharpen. Click a supportive material if you want to use one, then click repair. This spends one use of the three-piece sharpening stone set. A gun or armour may be too damaged to repair, as is the case with most guns and armour you'll loot early in the game. But all is not lost. Damaged guns and armour can be fixed, either enough to be repaired using repair kits, or up to full condition again. Let's examine how. To fix a gun or armour, you need a few things. A gun or armour in poor condition, obviously. An appropriate toolkit. Replacement parts in decent condition. And access to a technician's vice. First, review the replacement parts section of the gun or armour. You'll see the parts that make up the weapon and their condition. When you fix a weapon, you're replacing the damaged parts with parts in a better condition. Before you can fix a gun or armour, you'll need to disassemble guns or armour that have the same parts as the item you want to repair. Once you harvest matching parts, you'll need to repair them as they'll likely be in bad shape. Review the compatible repair kits section of a part to determine what repair kits they need. Right click a repair kit and select use, select the part you want to repair, then click repair. 
The better condition the parts are in, the better the condition the gun or armor is in when it's fixed. Once the parts are in better condition, you need a workshop kit. Review the compatible workshop kit section of the gun or armor to see which kit you need. Technicians sell kits, though some are locked until your reputation with the technician improves. Once you have the right workshop kit, ask a technician to use their vice. They charge a small fee to use their vice unless you've given them three toolkits. More on toolkits soon. You're given five minutes to use the vice. Walk up to the vice and use it. Click the repair tab, then click the item you want to repair. The item appears to the right, surrounded by all of its parts. Click the part you want to replace. Replacement parts in your inventory appear in the replacement parts area. Click the replacement part to add it to the repair task. Do this for the other parts you have available. If you click a part and nothing appears in the replacement parts area, you don't have replacement parts of this type in your inventory. Be mindful that toolkits have a limited number of uses. Each part you replace depletes one use from the toolkit. Notice that as you replace parts, the overall condition of the item improves. Once you're happy with the replacements, click repair. The new parts are installed and the old parts are discarded. If you replace all parts with parts in perfect condition, the weapon or armor is fully restored. Fixing guns and armor is usually more cost effective than having a technician repair them or purchasing new ones. Guns, armor, and the binoculars have an upgrade tree which improves their base statistics or adds functionality. Some items you loot may already have upgrades installed. A cog appears in the top left corner if an item is upgraded. Review the upgrades section of an item to see available upgrades. You can install upgrades if you have the required upgrade kit and workshop kit. Hover over the suitcase next to the upgrade to determine which upgrade kit is required. Upgrades cost nothing if you do the job yourself. Get access to a vice and click the upgrades tab. Click the item you want to upgrade. The upgrades tree appears to the right. Click the upgrade you want to install, then click upgrade. As with fixing items, each upgrade depletes one use from the workshop kit. Upgrade kits are completely spent when used. Ensure you have enough uses in the workshop kit to cover the upgrades you want to install. Technicians can also install upgrades. Technicians don't need upgrade kits, but they do charge for the work. To have a technician upgrade an item, talk to them and click the repair upgrade option. Click the item you want to upgrade, a visual representation of the item appears in the technician's window, along with the upgrade tree. Upgrades with a green bar are already installed. Upgrades which are darkened require other upgrades to be installed first. Upgrades are structured in branches, progressing from left to right. Upgrades to the left are basic upgrades. The middle upgrades are advanced upgrades. The right upgrades are fine-tuning upgrades. The technician must have the basic crafting tools to install basic upgrades, advanced tools to install advanced upgrades, and expert tools to install fine-tuning upgrades. The rightmost upgrades of a branch are unavailable until upgrades to the left are installed. To find out how much an upgrade costs, hover over its icon. To install the upgrade, click it, then confirm the purchase. On a final note, where a step of the branch offers a choice of two or more upgrades, only one upgrade can be chosen. Picking an upgrade locks out the others at that step. Before upgrading an item, it's a good idea to become familiar with how it works, so you have an idea of what you want to improve. Crafting is an important feature when playing on harder progression difficulties. Crafting lets you create items from salvaged components. This can save money in the long run, but it takes longer to acquire items. You start the game knowing how to craft basic items, but recipes are required to craft many items. Recipes can be looted from other stalkers, found in stashes, and you can even buy them from fellow stalkers. 
right click a recipe and select read to register the new recipes in your PDA. Learned recipes are under guides, notes. Once you have learned a recipe book, you don't need to keep it. Recipes are hard to find and it can take a while to expand your crafting knowledge. Crafting requires components. Components are found by looting stashes or, more commonly, disassembling items. If an item has a components section, you can disassemble it for a chance to get those components. Crafting also requires crafting tools. Crafting tools have infinite uses, but they are hard to find. Crafting tools are typically found in purple stashes. You'll need the right crafting tools in your inventory to craft items. If you give technicians crafting tools as part of the tasks they set you, the tools are immediately available at their vice and you won't need to carry crafting tools when you craft at their vice. There are other benefits to giving technicians crafting tools. If you complete all three of their crafting tool requests, you can craft at their vice for free. Other people may ask for crafting tools. Be on the lookout for them. To craft an item, use a technician's vice and click the craft tab. A list of item categories is on the left. Click the devices category to show icons for all craftable devices. Faded items are recipes you haven't learned yet. Click a known recipe to show the components and crafting tools required to craft it. Red numbers for a component mean you don't have enough of that component in your inventory. The number on the left is how many you have, the number on the right is how many you need. Green numbers indicate that you have enough of that component to craft the item. When you have all necessary components, click craft. If you are unable to craft the item, the information area tells you what is missing. Cooking offers a way to get food without paying for it. You'll still need equipment, fuel and meat, however. You can harvest meat from dead mutants. The parts you get are random and meat isn't guaranteed. Some mutants, like zombies, won't have meat. Meat is classified in tiers. Higher tier meat needs better fuel and equipment to cook. Meat can be eaten raw, but it is highly irradiated in this state and not healthy to consume. Cooking requires fuel such as charcoal, cooking equipment like the army kettle, and raw meat. The field cooking equipment property defines items as cooking equipment. The cooking fuel property defines items as cooking fuel. Add the cooking components to your inventory. Right click the cooking equipment and select use. Click a recipe. A list of required components and how many you have appear on the right. The left number is the number of components you have, the right number is the number of components required for the recipe. If the numbers are red, you don't have enough of that component. The fuel required to cook the recipe is listed underneath the selected recipe. Hover over the dish to see the benefits and side effects. Many dishes have a dose of radiation on top of satisfying your hunger. Click Cook to prepare the dish. You may find additional cooking recipes in your travels. These expand the types of meat you can cook and even improve the quality of the dishes. More ingredients are required for better recipes. You are able to recruit companions in Stalker Anomaly. Companions join you temporarily for some tasks or you can recruit them by talking to them. Companions are recruited by talking to them and selecting the Join Me option. Companions may also temporarily join you for some tasks. Some people want money to join your party. If your reputation is high among your faction, faction members will join you for free. This is a good way to add extra firepower to your expeditions. You can command companions to perform a range of tasks. You can do this by clicking the middle mouse button and selecting an order from an order wheel, pressing a number pad key, or speaking with a companion directly and clicking issue command. Companions can be told to guard a location, go into stealth, 
hang back, hold on to your gear, loot all items and bodies, and a number of other actions. Middle mouse button brings up the command wheel, which shows a list of commands you can issue. Hover over an action to see what the command is. The command wheel is great for issuing commands to all your companions at once. The backpack icon lets you open a companion's inventory if you're looking at them and are close enough. A portrait, health and weight stats appear if you open the command wheel while pointing at a companion. Commands you issue will be given to the squad which the companion belongs to. When you recruit stalkers to join you, they may already be in a group. The entire group will join you, becoming a squad under your command. Squad leaders are identified by the star symbol in their portrait. Any commands you give to a single squad member will be performed by the entire squad. If you recruit a lot of stalkers, you may have multiple squads under your control. To see what commands all of your companions currently have, click the Relations tab and hover over their portraits at the bottom of the display. This shows detailed information about their behaviour. Here are the main commands. When in stealth mode, companions crouch, turn off their lights and try to remain unseen. Companions remain close to you unless ordered to keep their distance. This opens a companion's inventory where you can give or take items from them. If you give them better equipment than they currently have equipped, they will equip it. Companions will loot bodies or items in the world, or will leave everything alone. Companions attack hostiles on sight unless they are commanded to hold their attack, in which case they won't attack until you tell them to. Companions follow you unless you order them to remain at a location. A portrait of your companions appears to the right of the screen, with their distance from you and their health bar underneath. The star and circle symbols in the top right corner indicate whether they were a leader of a group or a follower when you recruited them. Their portrait turns red when they're in combat. You'll need to know who your friends and enemies are. Let's examine factions. Each faction has a credo and purpose in the zone. You'll learn more about factions as you come into contact with them, and information about them is logged in the PDA. If you're following this tutorial, you are a loner, or free stalker. The irony defining loners is that they belong to no faction and are not driven by an overarching agenda. They do as they please. For now, it's enough to know that your only enemies in the Cordon region are bandits and the military. You may stumble across renegades or mercenaries, but they are less common in the Cordon area. Faction badges are typically looted from dead stalkers, and they designate which faction a stalker belonged to. They're like dog tags. Faction badges can be sold to traders, and some task givers want specific faction badges. Badges have another application which I'll explain shortly. Factions often have weapons and armor which set them apart from other factions. A faction outfit is something you should pay attention to if you plan to use disguises, which are discussed shortly. Armor always has a faction badge affixed to it. Your leather jacket has a loner badge attached, even if you sell the one in your inventory. To check which faction an armor belongs to, view the armor details. To remove a faction badge from armor, right click the armor and select Tear Patch Off. You won't receive a faction badge for doing this. Removing the badge makes the armor neutral instead of being affiliated with a faction. This is useful if you want to wear armor that you looted from an enemy. Faction badges can only be attached to armor which belongs to that faction. To attach a faction badge in your inventory, right click the armor and select Attach Patch. The armor will be associated with that faction again. So, why go to all the trouble of attaching patches? One word, disguises. Stalker Anomaly lets you masquerade as other factions. This can be useful for passing through enemy territory, looting an enemy base, surveying the numbers in a hostile camp, or assassinating targets deep behind enemy lines. There are toggle options in the settings which determine what a believable disguise is, but everything is on by default. Armor, helmet, weapons, backpack, inventory, movement, distance, 
and time spent near NPCs are all factors which determine suspicion. The strength of your charade is measured as coloured pips in the bottom centre of the screen. The more pips, the more suspicion at your presence. The pips also change colour. If they're green, you're good. If they're yellow, people are getting curious. If they turn orange, your cover is in danger of being blown. Stay in character for that faction and limit your time near enemy stalkers for the best success. Don't forget to remove the faction patch or armour afterwards, or your own faction might mistake you for an enemy and shoot. Factions act dynamically in the zone, wandering alone or in small groups and getting into skirmishes with enemies. Factions frequently battle each other and take checkpoints, with or without you. You can help your fellow faction members, use it as an opportunity to sneak past, or ignore it entirely. However, battles always leave behind the dead, and the dead don't have much use for their stuff. Dynamic faction behaviour can also mean that an area is safe when you travel through it, and turn into a war zone later on if it's controlled by a rival faction. Faction leaders often have dangerous but lucrative tasks for ambitious stalkers to undertake. Completing tasks for a faction will improve your standing with them. Perform enough, and they may start to like you. Faction leaders also offer the opportunity to change factions, meaning the faction you begin the game with doesn't have to be the one you end the game with. You've got knowledge. You start the game and then... what? This tutorial is focused on how to play Stalker Anomaly and push the why aside. What should you do? Where do you go? The Stalker games have always been about atmosphere and the experience of roaming a hazardous land, and Anomaly is no different. Here's my recommendation. 1. Do tasks for the loner faction. Stick to the Cordon region to begin with. 2. Save enough money to buy a new gun and decent armour. You'll need them. 3. Upgrade your artefact detector and go artefact hunting. 4. Take the time to explore the regions you visit. 5. Do tasks for other factions to build goodwill. 6. Complete the main tasks. Here are some tips to help you along the way. Use cover, even if you're not in combat. You never know where an attack might come from, and cover reduces the risk of something catching you off guard. Take your time. Mutants track you from long distances, and anomalies can be hard to spot. Take a moment every now and again to stop, look, and listen. Build goodwill with your faction. Better goodwill means better prices and access to free companions. Extinguish campfires you come across if there aren't any people around. Stalkers usually like campfires they stop at or pass by, and they can be a great distant warning system that people are around. Don't try to hoard everything. You don't have that much carry weight. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'm also doing a Stalker Anomaly Loner to Legend playthrough on this channel, so check it out if you want to see all this information in action. Until then, do svidanya, Stalker.